Welcome to the Capital Discussions Roundtable. I'm Tom Nunnemaker with our guest, Charles Cottle, the risk doctor. Um, before we get going, a quick disclosure the Capital Discussion is not a broker dealer or an investment advisor. This presentation is for educational purposes only. We don't know your situation and have no way of knowing what level of risk is appropriate for you. We're not making any specific trade recommendations. The risk of loss in trading options can be substantial, so please be aware of all of your risks prior to placing any trades. Hypothetical computer simulated trades are believed to be accurately represented. However, actual profit loss may vary due to market factors such as liquidity, slippage, and commissions. Again, this is for educational purposes only. So with that, I'm going to pause the recording and then we will uh, switch screens over to Charles. So here we are back with Charles and, uh, and the, synthetically speaking. So hi, Charles, nice to have you back. Thanks, thanks for having me. Okay, so I have an interesting topic today. Not everybody does this. Most people choose one side, uh, broken wing butterflies, uh, like your road trip trade is a variation of that with some extra call and this sort of thing. But uh, some people execute uh, a broken wing butterfly or a broken wing condor on either side, on both sides of the market. They'll execute one and then execute the other. So there are awesome strategies uh, when it's one side or the other but, uh, and they're very versatile, as versatile as verticals. However, when you combine both sides at once, there's, there are some problems and they're game changing problems. So um, let's have a look. So one, when you have uh, two broken ring spreads, they're harder to execute and manage than say a simple iron condor, which I'm gonna be harping on today. The commissions on the double broken wing spreads cost 100 to 300% more. Sometimes commissions aren't an issue with some people, but if they are, this is a heavy, heavy, heavy consideration. And then the synthetic cost of the extra of, of the spreads of the double is greater because in effect, you're synthetically buying more baby butterflies, which goes without saying it could obviously generate more profit potential if the market behaves just right, but it's a cost is a in, uh, important consideration. So let's go ahead. We're going to talk. First, I'm going to give a little lesson on dissection as it relates to the dissector. A lot of people don't know what the dissector is doing. They, you, many of you have seen my um, lessons or read from my book where it shows you how to do it by hand. There's some examples of a dissector, but I'm going to really dig into it and make it more simple today. Um, we're going to look at five different broken wing butterfly configurations and four different condor, broken wing condor configurations. And um, in the third one here, we're going to look at a couple of different alternatives, one in Risk Illustrator. All right, so here's the examples from the book. So those of you who don't know, when you have two butterflies in a row, it's a condor. When you have three butterflies in a row, it's a stretched out condor. And the way to understand the exhibit 618 and 619 are look at the far right column in each. And you, that's the configuration of a condor, as you know, and a stretched out condor, as you know. But what's inside it, what's embedded inside are butterflies bait what we call baby butterflies because they're they're smaller amounts of strikes so if you look at this configuration the 85 90 95 one by two by one and then add the 90 95 100 one by two by one just bring across the sums of them and you get the condor and it relates to the price as well same thing with these three in a row then we go to the lower left hand corner exhibit 621 and we have a butterfly that's skipping a strike, long one, short, uh, long one, nothing at the next strike, and then short two, and then nothing at the next strike, and then long one. What is that? That's four babies inside. And again, the same kind of configuration, this 90, 95, 100 is listed twice, just visually, and it's all stacked up here, and it adds to this big butterfly. Okay, big deal. All right, well, here, here's a, just an example of, of 700, 800, 900 butterfly, and it's got all these baby butterflies embedded, 2,500 baby butterflies embedded inside this, okay? Because you take the difference between the strikes, it's five strikes, one, two, three, four, five, square it, it's 25, multiply it times your base, 100. 
So it's 2,500. So that's, you know, important for a trader like when Tony Saliba did it in, and I, I displayed it in this video right here. This link right here should take you to the Super Trader Karen video up at Vimeo that's in the free bonus, bonus section. Okay, so here's the quick lesson, okay? So we're gonna be using first uh, position dissector and just to orientate you to the screen, on the left we have calls, on the right we have puts. And in this current position column, I've put in 1070 calls and 1080 puts. Now these are the Mambo Combo or the gut strangle, and it's synthetically an out of the money strangle. So most of us do it like what's in column K and column C, and the only reason we would probably have it, you and me, is if we legged into this thing and the market was moving around and we bought an out of the money call when it was lower than 170 and it went higher, all of a sudden was, if it was trading like Bitcoin or something, uh, where all of a sudden it's, you know, several strikes higher, you could buy what might be an out of the money put because it's above 180 and you would end up with two in the monies and it's only a box away from an out of the money strangle. So we know, many of you know that this strangle is synthetically, this strangle, the yellow is synthetically the blue. Now in column C and K, that's the results before we take out any butterflies, which we do in NO and P. And the sum of it is all in T and X over here. So it's just repeated. Now this would be different if we took out some butterflies. Now what happens if you have, uh, in the second example here, what happens if you have 10 underlying? What the dissector will do is saying, no, you don't have any more underlying. You have synthetically long 10 calls and short 10 puts. And that becomes important in more complicated positions than just this simple position right here. Obviously, if this was your only position, you wouldn't want to look at them as, look at them as calls and puts. You would want to look at them at, at the position as just 10 underlying or 1,000 shares. It's all summarized to here on the right. And then again, the in column T and X and T86 and X86 are these synthetic amounts. Now, over here, in, if we have 10 in the money calls, synthetically what the dissector will do is it, it will give you three positions that it is synthetically. In other words, it's gonna take out anything that's in the money and turn it into out of the money. So what this left-hand section automatically does is it turns in the monies to out of the monies, okay? But in this case, it doesn't make any sense to look at a simple 10 lot of calls as three other positions, a combo and an extra put. No, so what we're going to do to override that is change the pivot strike over here on the right. Over here, it's we're using 175 because that might be where the underlying's trading at the moment. But in when we start to dissect, we might realize, oh, that's stupid. I don't want the, dice, the pivot K to be 175. I can switch it either here or here. And in this case, I just, over in column V, I've changed it to 170, which puts it back. It's boxing everything to the 170 strength. In other words, it's fooling it into thinking that at the money is 170. Now, here is what happens if we take out a butterfly. Over here in column F, and this is a before and the above and a after in the below. So it's broken up into these top half and bottom half. In each case, we're long 10 butterflies, 10 by 20 by 10. And then over here in column N, when we enter 10 lots into this column here saying, we want to dissect out 10 butterflies, it's going to take from column T, it's going to take those away. It's going to remove them. It's going to have 10 less positive, 10, 20 less negative and 10 less positive. And the result is gonna be down here. It's all summarized down here. Entering 10 to cell N41 is adding 10, 185, 190, 195 call butterflies while at the same time 
it subtracts a long 10, a short 20, and a long 10 of these threes, three calls in T40, T41, and T42. Okay, so if any of this is going too fast, you know, you have the PDF that you should have been able to download. Tom gave you the link and go ahead and uh, review that later. Here's a second example. <clears throat> What's happening here? Here's the 10 butterflies. And by the way, the I haven't messed around with in the money, at the money, or out of the money. These are just all out of the money to make it simple. And this is a skipping a strike butterfly. And this reinforces that idea presented earlier that when you skip a strike, there's four baby butterflies in here. And since it's times 10, it's 40 babies. And it's shown if we're going to enter 10, 10, and 10 in columns N, 40, 41, and 42, that's going to remove these over here in column T. And thus, in the lower half, they're gone because the 10, 20, and 10 are in there. By the way, the B flea 1, B flea 2, or B fly 1, B fly 2, B fly 3 are summed up in column M. So this is M is just repeating it where there's a solid cell, that's your workspace. You can enter things, anything, but where there are dashes, you're not entering anything. Those are locked, so you can't screw up the formulas. And by the way, this uh, spreadsheet's available in the Vimeo package that um, many of you know about. All right, here's a condor in the next example. What do we enter here? We enter two 10 lots in a row. Just like what we saw in the book, two butterflies in a row is a condor, so two 10 lots in a row. And if we enter them here in N40 and 41, that's taking out the 180, 85, 90 butterfly and the 185, 90, 95 butterfly. This is all gonna make more sense as to why we're doing this in a couple of minutes. So these disappear, nothing left to dissect. Here's your two sets of butterflies and we move on to the next one. All right, here's where it's a stretched out butterfly, I'm sorry, stretched out condor, and that's gonna require entering in N40, 41, and 42, three 10 lots in a row. Here they are in the lower half, and it makes this in T, in the above, disappear, they're gone, because it's subtracting out all these contracts. So, now we're going to move on to uh, our first example of a double broken wing butterfly. This uh, ex exact same position I saw it in, in a, another webinar somewhere where somebody explains this as the greatest spread since sliced bread. So let's see uh, whether that's true or not, just from an efficiency standpoint. So when we dissect this out, and I've, I've used these B fly one, B fly two, B fly three, just in this manner to show, well, I'll take out the call side, the put side, and the iron side, if you will. Um, and, but they could have all been entered in, in column N, but the sum is in M. So let's look at the sum in M. 10, 20, 10, 10, 10, 20, 10. Okay, well, what does that look like? Well, there's a lot of tens there, isn't there? Well, there they are. That's a big condor. So down below, in, in comparison, I have an iron condor involving the same strikes. Well, what's this group minus this group? Here's the answer over here, the difference. It's, it's actually this table minus this table. And you have the 10 extra butterflies at the 165 strike, the 160, 165, 170. Most of you know that when I call a butterfly, I name it by the body. So it's the 165 butterfly. 165 baby butterfly and the 185 baby butterfly, otherwise known to the world as 180, 185, 190, long 10, short 20, long 10. So we see that it's got double the amount of contracts in the double butterfly, uh, double broken wing, 80 contracts versus only 40. That's a lot of commissions to a lot of people unless you're on a free commission a package somewhere. And there's 20 extra embedded butterflies, which by the way, obviously this position, uh, the top position as compared to the bottom position has a little bit of a bias. If, it, if it, the position could talk, it would say, I want the underlying to 
uh, expire at 165 or at 185 because that's where I have most of my butterflies. Obviously, I want more winners and to take care of my losers. Well, you have to ask yourself, okay, on the front end, it might be cheap, the embedded uh, value of these, and it might be worth having, or you might think, oh gosh, you know, we're gonna make a move one way or the other, and it's gonna be uh, to this kind of a magnitude, and it's worth having. But I think if you just look at the odds and everything, you're gonna find that this trade right here achieves the, mostly the same objective for half the commissions, and it's a lot easier to execute one single condor, iron condor or call condor or put condor, than it is to execute two separate broken wings. Let's go to the next example. So this is 10 by 20 by 10. It's basically, if invisibly, you could see that if their 10 lot was here, instead of here, it's basically a, an extra vertical paying for the butterfly. So instead of buying the 160 call up puts and the 190 calls and buying the 155 puts and the 195 calls, in effect, we're doing verticals here that are embedded. We're selling extra verticals because if I'm not buying this one and I'm buying that one instead, it's like I'm selling the one I had here and buying that, that's a credit spread. So this credit spread is the magic supposedly, in reducing the cost of your play. And that's why most people do broken wing spreads. Let's go to the next one. This is another variation, a one by three by two. This one's in the book. Um, but let's see how it looks here. It looks almost the same. It breaks out into, this looks wrong. So um, I have an error here. So, um, but you could see the forest through the trees. Obviously, I have a 10 lot here. I should have a 10 lot here and a 20 lot here. I could pull that up. This is the second example. Uh, that'll screw things up. Maybe I'll come back to this one. But um, it, it, it plays out to where it pushes out. It's, it should read, and I'll do it at the end, 20 and 20 here and all 10s in the middle here. So you would think, okay, why would I want an extra 10 lot of butterflies at each end? There's not much market bias, justification, technical analysis that can warrant doing that. So there's no reason to do it. It's inefficient and it's triple the commissions. It's 120 contracts versus 40. So three times as many uh, in commissions with 20 extra embedded baby butterflies. So we'll come back to this one. Okay, let's go to this one. Here's the similar one to the first position, except it's skipping a strike now here, and it's skipping uh, twice as many strikes here. So it's still 10 by 20 by 10. And here's how this configuration works out. 10, 20, 30, 40, 30, 20, 20, 20, 30, 40, et cetera. And the difference is, these extra butterflies, it's double the commissions, it's 80 extra butterflies, 40 and 40, as it's displayed, because this is this stretched out condor comes out to a 10, 20, 20, 20, 20, 10 configuration, okay? And so, all right, oh, by the way, if those of you who really see it, 10, 20, 10, what, that looks familiar, that's 40 baby butterflies, that's, the, in, that's the embedded butterflies of one big 150, 160, 170 butterfly. And same thing over here. It's a 180, 190, 200 butterfly. So you'd have to want that or need the market to go in that direction. And let's look at the same exact position, but looked at a little bit different. Remember this little configuration in here? This, this, this happens to be an out of the money strangle, but Again, it's an in-the-money strangle synthetically. So let's look at it in the next image as an in-the-money strangle. So here it is as the, these the little dashes have shifted, um, these, these slashes rather. But what we're focusing on now here is this blue area and this blue area. And what I just said is this out-of-the-money strangle synthetically and in-the-money strangle. Well, when you look at this, configuration 10 by 20 by 10. Wow, that's a big butterfly, and so is that. So these are just overlapping butterflies. 
They're overlapping butterflies. And coupled with the uh, condor situation that we have here, now the top half and the bottom half, this is just repeated from before, the top half. The bottom half, I've broken it down differently just so you can see the embedded nature of it. And we're going to see this even more in the next slide using Risk Illustrator. But here we have, it's this. everybody should know by now, or trust if they don't get it now, that they, when they study this a little bit later, after I go, you can, you can study this and start to understand the 10 butterfly, you know, all these butterflies in a row, it's a condor. So here's a five strike condor here, which is um, the 150, 155, 165, 170, synthetically, these three here. Here's it uh, over seven strikes, 145 to 175. See, when there's five in a row, that means there's seven strikes involved. And when there's seven in a row, there's nine strikes involved. So these are three sets of condors leaving just a single butterfly. I, if I had a fourth column here, B fly four, you would see that 10 lot sitting out here, right here, a 10 lot. And then I've broken this the other way for the, the lower strike, uh, the higher strike ones over here, the call side. It's this condor, this condor, this condor. So this plants the idea that whether I get into this thing as a double butterfly or I layer in by doing condors, like if the market's down and I want to buy some cheap out of the money condors, I might have bought this one here. And then the market goes up and I buy this one down here to kind of offset it and et cetera, and go back and forth and I'm legging. So condor to condor to condor, it, although it racks up a lot of commissions, you know, commissions, if you're making a lot of profits, are dimes to dollars. You're not gonna worry about that. But, and you're not gonna enter this as all these different condors, because that would be just, uh, you know, very capital intensive as far as uh, commissions go. Here, uh, this, this condor here is, 40 contracts, this one's 40 contracts, this one's 40 contracts, and then this one's 40, 40, 40, right? And then this butterfly's 40, and this one's 40. So you're not, you know, count them up. There's uh, eight times 40 is 320 contracts, the same as if you had entered at this, uh, I mean, for each, uh, this many butterflies. I mean, you're not going to want to do that. But if you're, if you're already in a position, you could say, well, I, I want to peel off just, this condor, or I want to peel off this condor as I'm starting to take profits or reduce my risk, or if, uh, you know, for technical analysis reasons, that area is no longer a likely, in my opinion, uh, why do I need to have it? I might peel off condor at a time. All right, so let's look at it in Risk Illustrator. So this is the same exact position, and this uses prices. So what Risk Illustrator does compared to Position Dissector is it adds graphics and it adds Greeks and prices. So here's all our baby butterfly prices. The ones on the outside are eight or nine cents. And the, as they get closer to the money, it's 64 cents, the most expensive one with these uh, amount of days to go. All right, so about a month ago in this example. So, what do we have here? So this way I broke it down into a giant condor here in the first one, and it shows the value of that condor. So all in all, this position costs to put on 12, synthetically $12,000. I entered it all as a um, call condor, just so that we don't have to look at it as an iron, which is a credit or even money, but synthetically is a debit. Actually, it's a credit of about $3,000 and, or, or sorry, it's a debit of $2,000 if you did the iron. And then there's 10,000 of margin. So that's how you get this $12,000. So, but breaking it all down and looking at all as calls in this so that we just think of the debit instead of a credit and a liability at or a reduction in buying power, we're looking at purely as debits. So you have $12,000 on the table. Well, where, do they, where does the money sit? Well, 4,580 of it's in this part of the position in this giant condor going from 140 to 210. Remember, we, the, the, 
the wing of this deal is in the strike just beyond the last uh, body uh, strike, right? So it's the 140, 145, 200, 205, uh, sorry, 205, 210 condor in this first line. It's also a little bit shorter of a condor in the next row, butterfly dissection two, and that value is 4,406. And then there's a, a condor here, a five striker, meaning three butterflies in a row and three in a row here that are 1275 and 994. And then there's that extra butterfly, 430, 326. Now the first thing to note, remember that this had, if we look above, this had uh, 40 extra butterflies, right? Well, where are they? Well, 10 of them are here, 10 of them are here, and one of them's here, and one of them here. But uh, so it's basically getting, you know, a lot of this money is the extra money that's not needed for this position. So you can peel off uh, quite a lot of money here. And I think just by looking at it, this 10 and this 10 right here, the first two rows is 10, 20. It would together, if we sum these up, it would be 10, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 10, right? That is right here. 10, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 10, right? So that, this, the bottom three rows are the excess. How much does that add up to? Well, it adds up to about $3,000. It's 1275, this 994, the 430, the 326. That's an extra $3,000 you're paying to get these extra humps in here when the position would do just nicely if it stayed within this range. What do you need those extra things for? And if you have some kind of technical analysis that says, well, we should be, you know, 10 point, 15 points away from the at the money before expiration, and that's why I need them on both sides. If there is a justification of that, then I'll, I'll clam up. But I'm just showing you how you could bring more efficiency to your pricing. So um, I think that's my last image. So what I'll do now is I'll look for that one um, uh, dissector, and we'll fix that one. And where is it? It is. Okay, that's, let's file open. I think that one's going to be 2C. Da, 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 boom. Okay, yeah, here's the culprit. So we're going to take out this 10. We're going to make this 10, rather. And we're going to make this 20. Hey, Charles, are we supposed to be seeing a spreadsheet? Because I'm, I'm looking at a graphic. It looks like a slide. Okay. Um, it should be. It's in the screen that I'm using. Please move this window away from shared application. What does that mean? I'm not sure. All right. Um, um, let's maybe, see you, maybe you could stop sharing and reshare it. Maybe that would fix it. Okay. See if I can do that somehow. Um, didn't do this right. So uh, that is a 10 instead of the 20, and the 20 belongs down here. And now, whoop, it doesn't belong there. This be becomes a 20 right there. So now everything's gone from column T, and now this belongs down here. And that is the difference now. So tell me a position that, does it make sense? They have two butterflies way out here. It's extra cost, it's extra commissions. This is 90 versus 70, it's not so much more, but certainly for efficiency purposes, this is the correct one. And I'll, I'll correct the slide. I'll use the same link, so you should be able to download the correct one later. And uh, I'll also edit the video, and you won't even hear what I'm saying at the moment in the edited video. <laughs> so I think that does it. Uh, I, do, I don't see how, uh, if anybody asks any questions, but I'll be glad to take some questions now. I don't see any questions yet, so if you do have questions, just type them in the chat. Uh, 
I don't see any questions. Okay, they figured it out. They got it. Okay, so <laughs> I'll wrap it up here. Uh, most of you know that the arrangement that we created where you uh, write to or send an email to Tom and Tom will send you a coupon code so that you can get my package at Vimeo for a couple of hundred bucks off. Some of you have done that. But I want to uh, do this now. I'll, uh, change the deal a little bit. Pay the full amount, $9.97. I will throw in Risk Illustrator free. I'm going to do that only till the end of January. It's sort of an experiment to see what the appetite is for Risk Illustrator. Um, and um, so that's a $5.49 value. That's what people pay for it. So $9.97 minus that $5.49, the rest is quite cheap. So it's a pretty compelling uh, offer, I think. And so, you, again, you have to, if you want that deal, when you buy Vimeo for $9.97, let Tom know, send him the receipt, and he'll let me know so that um, I could then send you Risk Illustrator because Tom's controlling all the transactions there. Okay? It looks like we have a few minutes. Do you think you could do maybe a little walkthrough of Risk Illustrator? Because a lot of people aren't too familiar with it. Sure. So um, here's the position that we're playing with at the moment. This is the, um, the main screen where you set up everything. So this is manual. It works with the FTSE connected, and I'm looking towards um, – getting this to where it, it connects to thinkorswim and or uh interactive brokers i've just got to find somebody who knows excel as much as the guy who did this james parker who's not going to do that work but we want to make you know, have it automatically feed these uh live data into it but right now you have to do it manually so you choose your you know your expiry and you choose how many strikes you want to look at. If you want to look at 61 strikes, it's got, you know, the ability to, you know, dissect, you know, large positions like in the S&P or the RUT or something like that. I'll put it back to uh, just 31 at the moment. And uh, probably can look at this position as 21 only. Okay. So, and after putting in that and the underlying price um, and the volatility at the money, and then you could choose different SKUs, index SKU, um, a, a smile, equity SKU, and you have some, a crash SKU. And the, the shape of the SKU shows up in this area here as it changes. And that's getting closer to your prices. There's a, a way to do that in the options chain. You can tweak it, the options chain. And then there's a place to dissect out spreads. So I could put in verticals or take out anything to have comparisons. But the main place that I do all my stuff is in the butterfly dissection. And here's showing the butterfly dissection arc. Um, usually, uh, it, what it plots is these butterfly values. For some reason, I don't have something checked, but uh, it would have a, just a, a value of the butterflies that you're dissecting out. And then this is the dice, main dissection page. Now, if you're actually making trades, you would actually put in your trades. But this is the thing that I want to um, have somebody figure out um, who's really good at Excel that would automatically talk to the data, either by importing uh, a CSV or um, a DDE link or whatever would be required to talk to your account and find out what positions you have and it would populate this. And when you've put in all your trades and commissions and everything on a per trade basis, then that would populate the trade right up in here. And these are all simulations. So everything that I did today was a simulated trade. So even though I've entered it as a, a call broken wing and a put broken wing, by choosing this pivot K of 130, it shows up as all out of the money calls. It's 
So it's all going to be debit. But I could easily make that higher and make it all puts. So if I put in 215, which is above all the strikes, it's going to shift all this down to here. But I could also look at it all as irons as well and just put the pivot K right in the middle on 75. And now before I dissect, it's going to be showing up like that. So then I go to the butterfly dissector and I can erase all these with by clicking any of these lines, one line at a time. Let's see if I go Alt Z, does that, no, it doesn't undo. So undo, I think, is disabled. So uh, otherwise, it would get really complicated. But I could start dissecting it fresh. And I'll make this 175, the pivot case. So now it's an out-of-the-money dissection. And I could just go here and go eliminate this 10. Now, in my consciousness, these are 10 calls or 10 puts. It doesn't matter. It's all the calls are synthetically puts when you um, take a box out or take a reversal conversion mm -hmm. out, it's automatic. So 10, and now I see 20 there. So I'm gonna take out 20, and then I'm going to take out 30 because there's a 30 down here. Maybe this will be better if I show it this way. This 30, right? So I'm looking at this line. I'm just gonna enter in here Whatever's down there, the first number, 30, I see a 40. I want to enter it in a different row, um, column, 40, 50, or now down to 30. So 30, 20, 20. Now, because the dissector is pivot K is 175, it shifted up from here, from down here to up here. So now it's working in the top row, 20, 30, 40, down to 30, 20, and 10. So I get the same results, but all in one line now. I put them all on different lines so that you would see all the babies separately. I'm going to just click this off for a minute, get rid of them. And now I'm going to do it, I'll show you a, a faster way to do this. So remember I did 10. I could go and click this 10, Control C for copy, and then paste them right here and it takes out all those babies right there. Then I could copy this row, 10, but leave off the first and last 10 lot and put it down here and enter that and then take off these to achieve the position I originally showed you and enter them really fast. So now I'm left with 10 by 20 by 10, that's a skip strike. So that is simply you know, the three tens in here, 10 and 10, uh, sorry, let's see, no, take that out. Oh, I, all right, let's do it this way, 10 and 10. So there's a condor and then, sorry, you have to skip a strike. Wait, no, let's take a look at this again. All right, 10 by 20, all right. So I see a 10 lot there. So I had a 10 there. What does that do? It gives me a short 10 there. So that means I'm gonna remove some condors in here. So let's go to the other end. Let's get out this 10, work backwards, 10. All right, so there's three condors in a row, three baby butterflies in a row. See the 10, 10, skip a strike, 10, 10. That means these three have to come out right here. Clear contents and they'll be gone. Boom. So this is another way to look at it, like the way I did it um, in um, example number 
three in here. So look at that here. I'll come back here in a moment. I'm going to go to the how do I advance this? Hmm. Is it a PowerPoint? It is a it's no, it's a um oh a PDF. PDF. Let me try page down. Oh okay. Yeah. Let's see. Um it was not that one. All right, we're getting warmer. This one. Remember, big condor, big condor, big condor. This is combining some of these and having the leftover butterflies. That's what this is looking like right here. And that here's a $5,000 condor, another $5,000 condor. And then it doesn't make, oh, because these options are worth zero in this uh, thing. So that's why all these condors in a row equal all these condors in a row. You know, but this has 130 baby butterflies. This is a 10. Why are they both the same price? 5062 and 5062. How come they're the same? Because look at the prices of these butterflies. So I, depending on what your expiration is, go to trade analysis, trade analysis and change the um, the expiry now to say July, and I'll give those butterflies some value. These butterflies are, oh, here's one that's 30, 000. zero, zero. Hmm. Let's go to um, change that expiry to, oh, it didn't change it, that's why. July, oh, I gotta pick a day. All right, yes. Now we should see these butterflies get some values, right? So now the difference between those is uh, displayed in the butterfly dissection, and they're now different values. This one's 5,000, this is 4,761. So if your butterflies are worthless on the wings, there's not gonna be much difference. And a lot of people, they do inefficient trades when they, you know, a, a condor or butterfly is buying a vertical and selling a vertical. Well, a lot of times a vertical is too cheap to be short, too cheap to be sold. It might only be one or two cents or three cents, it's not worth selling. So instead of doing a butterfly or condor, a bull spread and a bear spread, you eliminate the further out strike uh, spread or the bear spread or the credit spread and just do the debit spread. So you'll get more bang for the buck. You won't pass the middle. Uh, the problem with a, a butterfly or a condor, an out of money one is it can fly right by the strikes involved. Imagine you're in doing something in Bitcoin someday when they have the options and it flies right through your strikes because it's on its way from, you know, 15,000 down to 9,000 and you blow right by the 12,000 butterfly, you know? So if you have a vertical instead, because you didn't sell the cheaper out of the money vertical to reduce your cost, you'll, you'll be a winner because that uh, bull or bear spread that you bought, the debit spread will be able to go on to victory without uh, being impeded by the credit spread, eating, eating up all the profit. Um, Cheryl, there, there was a question, uh, Tom asked, uh, what model are, are you using for the prices? Well, this one is using the um, European model for uh, indexes, Black Shoals, because it's what uh, James Parker, who's the developer and, and trades the FTSE uh, trades. So that's, that's why. So when I embark on the project of importing data, what I'd like to be able to do is import the Greeks too. So whatever Greeks you're using, it would import those. And so when you dissect out the butterflies and everything and set up your SKUs in your, 
trading platform on Thinkorswim or whatever, it will uh, be able to do that. And uh, there, we might put in some other models as well to drive it from this to make it standalone as well, not needing the uh, data. But that remains to be seen by whatever uh, Excel genius we can get uh, introduced to. Well, I know a few. Um, just curious, though, where do you get the data for, uh, for the program? Well, again, the um, FTSE data is just imported uh, through a, a import function by James, and um, he does that for his own trading. And I don't know exactly how it's doing, but it's coming from the uh, FTSE exchange in London. And here, all the, it's all manually entered data and, and driving uh, it with the Black-Scholes index model for European-style exercise. Okay, uh, let's see. There was a question about uh, if you already purchased the Vimeo package with the $200 discount, um, can they pay the 200 and get the Risk Illustrator? And I think the answer is yes, right? Yes, thanks. Mm -hmm. I meant to email you people in advance, but did not get around to it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, just to show you, uh, you know, in, in Risk Illustrator, uh, I mean, in, um, in the dissector, let me, uh, in position dissector, oftentimes I'll set up the strikes to where this is um, all the strikes going. It, it's counterintuitive when you have 150 be the lowest strike and the highest strike is 200 down here. So you could reverse that by entering these in different order, right? So now it's going higher, right? It amounts to the same thing. There is a slight problem though when you do that. Well, first of all, these are the puts, but you wouldn't do and these are in the money puts now. So you'd have to enter this here. So look what I did. <laughs> this is kind of funny. I'll open. I first enter, I did everything in, um, with, with the strikes higher. Like, uh, let's look at that one. Um, yeah. So I entered them all like that, right? And I had all the money calls here, all the money puts here. And then I redid the whole presentation and I pasted everything in and into the PowerPoint <laughs> and I was good to go except for one little problem. So everything's the same, right? So here's the butterflies. I mean, the same data. This is the 80, 85, 90 here instead of down here. So I had to relabel all those. But then I realized, wait a minute. It, when I went to um, Tom and I talked before the presentation, I sent it to him beforehand to see if his crowd would have an appetite for this content. And I said I was going to just do the dissections first and do the lesson at the end. And he and my wife thought that, you know, do the lesson first, even though people have seen it, it'll be a nice refresher. So I went back to that. And when I did that, I um, discovered another problem. And that was when you do this, this combo business, the way that the sheet is structured it would turn outs into ins instead of ins into outs if you reverse these two strikes. So when you reverse these two, now you'd be, it would be out of the money to in the money. And I realized that I hadn't, uh, so I had to redo it again. And then I woke up at 4.30 in the morning, realized I made another mistake and fixed, I had to fix them all again. And so um, that's what you get for what I did in this kind of presentation, get it right. <laughs> so those are some of the limitations. All right, well, we're uh, coming up on an hour, so that's usually where we like to stop, but I appreciate you coming on, Charles. It's always a pleasure to have you. And uh, if people wanna take advantage of either of those deals, just uh, send me an email and I can um, point you in the right direction. I appreciate that. And I'm going to edit this. I'm going to edit out all this extra stuff we didn't need to talk about. And so it'll be a lot shorter than an hour. And uh, 
I'll take out, you know, sometimes I say calls and I meant puts or I said a strike and I'll, I'll repair all those if I said anything wrong and we'll make it uh, nice and clean so it's easier when you go through it the next time you won't be slowed down or uh, so just wait, you know, Tom will send me his recording, I'll merge mine, get the better vocals from each and uh, make a nice little succinct little thing. And if I could think of anything to add, I might add something new to it, so. Sounds great. Okay. All right, well, thanks again. And uh, thanks everyone for sticking with us. And I'll get the recording over to you, Charles, as soon as I can. Okay, take care, thanks. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.